Hi, everyone. OK, I, I think I'm heard. So uh, I'll talk exactly about Ethereum and building the Ethereum ecosystem, core development, uh, but also about this founder journey of being the builder and focusing on building and not more like VC style projects or end user projects. Uh, so full scope of the core of Ethereum core, what does it mean to build Ethereum at Nethermind? Uh, so maybe first a bit about me. Uh, so uh, my name is Tomasz Stanczak and I've been working on the Ethereum uh, core development, Nethermind client project as a lead developer between 2017 and 2021. And uh, nowadays, uh, I'm still developing, I'm still coding actively, but much less because a lot of my time is taken by uh, mostly operations of the company, working with the foundations, uh, working on architecture, specking, and I, I work on multiple projects now. Uh, some of them you may have heard of. Uh, they're all related somehow to, to Ethereum or to Ethereum-related layer twos. So this will be, uh, never mind, it's, uh, it's Flashbots, uh, where I work on architecture and specs, the Euler DeFi project, the uh, StarkNet ecosystem, uh, work on TwinStack, which is taking as a service, and Forta Council. Uh, so practically, I can say that for the last five years, I worked double time on Ethereum ecosystem. Um, and a bit more about the Nanomines, uh, the company that I founded five years ago. So nowadays, it's uh, 200 people. Uh, but it started as a bootstrap, bootstrap business of like a solo builder working on protocol. Uh, we're building execution clients, Nethermind, but also the one for StarkNet, Juno. Uh, we work on infrastructure projects, staking cryptography research, work on DeFi research and development, uh, and also a lot on security, on the auditing and uh, formal verification. I work with businesses like Flashbots, with Brevin Howard, with Gnosis Chain. Um, so, you know, my, my journey started by simply picking up the yellow paper after spending a year uh, being very much interested in what is Ethereum, uh, after joining one of the meetups, reading nonstop about blockchain, about Ethereum, uh, and then picking up yellow paper and starting to write execution client. And when I started, it was all about building tests, code, tests, code, and using the tests that were already in the ecosystem. And here I think it's important to understand that if you're a builder and the ecosystem has any anchor points that allow you to start building some very complicated projects, it might be a good way to go. For me, it was a set of Ethereum tests, which were around 20,000 tests covering various aspects of EVM and the consensus and so on. Uh, so that was a one dev start. And what does it mean to build a client for Ethereum, to build a node for, for any layer one blockchain? Uh, it means that you have multiple components and multiple aspects to take care of. So it's the virtual machine, it's the JSON RPC, or any, any kind of API that users really see as the way of talking to the network, talking to the node. Uh, so people will use some blocks block scanners, block scouts, box explorers, and then they will also want to talk to the node and ask questions about the blocks, about the transactions. Uh, it's building the network, the P2P layer, to make it really decentralized network, so all the gossip and synchronization. Uh, it's building the state, so all the details of the balances of the account, storages of the, um, of the smart contracts, the smart contracts code deployment as well. Uh, transaction pool mechanisms for gossiping and potentially maybe some plugins extracting MEV on the go. Uh, proof of work, proof of stake mechanisms, so block building and verification. And the product itself, so documentation, the tutorials, the plugins, the uh, DevOps aspects of like wrapping it in the Docker and so on. So the execution client, never mind nowadays, like you see the list, it's around. 90 or 100 different packages within a big .NET project. And what a company builds is much more than that, because as you add more and more developers, um, there's much more work, and it starts to be a bit more organized. Uh, so obviously, some of the very early realization when you work on the protocol projects and the protocol engineering, it's, it's systems engineering. It's lots of coding, low-level coding, optimizations, performance. 
but then it becomes very quickly DevOps and infrastructure uh, fun. So it's deployment of nodes, it's running the nodes, it's running tests, smoke tests, uh, configuring the existing tests in the ecosystem, fuzzing of the application, making sure that you don't, le uh, don't end up causing any of the consensus network splits. Uh, so all of that exists already in the Ethereum ecosystem and is very supportive for anyone who, who launches, who starts as a builder on the protocol level. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why we have nowadays uh, five execution layer clients, five consensus layer clients, and Ethereum becomes uh, very well known for this client diversity. Uh, as you keep adding more developers, as nowadays we have uh, 20 developers solely dedicated to the core development of the Ethereum client at Nanomine, uh, you also build other functions uh, that are natural when you can split them among more people, so QA, so DevOps, and also building the organization around. So maybe before I talk more about the community and everything that we have to deal with outside of the code, uh, think about coming back to the journey, starting with one person building something that is generally considered quite a, uh, quite a big challenge to build a full node implementation. Uh, and when you do that, you hear a lot that this is no way to monetization, that it's impossible to, uh, to create a business out of it if you don't have big funding at the beginning. And this is something that many of the, many of the builders, many of the uh, super talented engineers at the beginning think, that they, they have an idea that there is a lot of work and that there is no funding, so the only way to go is to, to go for a VC funding and start a business. And then you realize that actually you start focusing on something that you may be um, less skillful with because you still don't have experience of building company, but you cannot use that massive talent of engineering of building. Uh, what happens to have worked in my case was just focusing on something that I was really confident of, just coding, 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 and becoming like better and better in understanding blockchain space, and only then building the organization around it. So probably one, one more path to consider, start, uh, start by building, and later things, like people start joining you because they see that there is a value in what you're building. Uh, sorry, this one. Uh, so the Ethereum ecosystem nowadays, so all the core developers work together, so this is not uh, one client, as I mentioned, and another mind that we're building. Uh, but there is obviously the classic, the Geth, there is, uh, there is Bezu, there is Aragon, there are multiple consensus layer clients that you may have heard of, like Lighthouse, Prism, Lodstar, Nimbus, uh, Teku. And for the coordination in the ecosystem, you need the channels where people uh, feel really invited to speak together, to discuss together the matters of the protocol. So uh, Ethereum has been managed for the last uh, 150 bi-weekly meetings, so around 300 weeks, six years, uh, during the all-core devs calls, which are open, which are recorded, which are available on YouTube, and you can watch the history of Ethereum there. Uh, people discussing during the winter times, it was maybe six, seven developers. Uh, during the times of hype, it might be 50, 60 people, or even up to 100 people uh, discussing the future of the protocol. Uh, this is all open for people who start building. If you start contributing, then you can join. Uh, there are Discord channels that also uh, cover lots of topics that are related to core development on Ethereum. Um, the if research channels. So this is an important source of information, exploration of what comes to the, uh, to the data availability, to the new cryptography research, to consensus solutions, to the... EVM changes, so all of that very early research, exploratory research is available in ETH research, and this, very quickly, there is a realization that as a core developer, as a system engineer, you have to cover a very, very wide array of uh, topics that you have to follow. You have to read the research, you have to analyze the discussions, you have to join the, uh, the channels at Discord, at Telegram channels, uh, look at uh, security, as you see here, is a Telegram channel of around 1.5, uh, 1.5, 1.5 members who discuss Ethereum security. Um, all of that is an aspect of being core developer at Netamind and being really a core developer dedicated to any chain building. Uh, probably on any layer one, 
you will have to deal with a lot of different forums, collect pieces of information, read a lot of research papers and discussions, and try to understand how to, how to incorporate that into your code base. Um, so apart from the developer or research-focused materials, you have the community itself. And this is the extremely rewarding part of being a core developer. Um, probably, like, within the community, when you deal with the community that is, uh, that is dedicated to your layer one, uh, you have a lot, a lot of support. So people pick up what you're building, they cheer on you, they, um, they integrate that, even if it's super, super not ready, you'll feel it. And this is uh, fantastic because you, you barely start and you see that people want to use it. They, uh, they will contribute, they start writing tutorials on what you're creating. And that feeling is with everyone at NetherMind, you see people coming for internships, trying, exploring, building something, and people outside picking it up. And these communities are, are very quickly built if there is a common sense that we're building something cool. Uh, so where the community exists? So there is uh, Ethereum Cut Herders is a group of the project managers. They organize a lot of uh, events and talks and interviews with core developers. Uh, there is obviously Twitter where you follow a lot of discussions of uh, where, where the future of Ethereum goes or any blockchain really. Uh, there is the Ethereum Magicians Forum that discusses a bit more protocol-specific uh, community-driven changes, uh, so EIP, CRC standards, and so on. Uh, and now coming back to Nethermind itself as a company. So, I'm not sure if you see it well, but the execution client and building it was for us the way of building the expertise and understanding Ethereum very well, understanding how exactly things works and avoiding the, uh, the risk of building something as a, as a founder on top of a protocol that you don't understand. So obviously you have to do that. You have to make this like jumps and skip things if you want to build fast. Uh, but for some people, there'll be always this, uh, this greediness, this uh, insatiable hunger to actually understand every single detail of the underlying protocol. So another mind started like this, by understanding the protocol uh, from the very core and then building other functions around it. So uh, apart from DevOps that is supporting the execution client, it also builds the understanding of how to run the infrastructure so we can start serving other companies on running nodes, on building the quick access to nodes, on security of the nodes, and so on. Uh, we built the layer two solutions because we understand how layer two interacts with the layer one protocols. So we help, uh, mostly we work with the StarkNet, Starkware, uh, ecosystem and network helping them to build tooling for the for the protocol. Uh, we build the web free solutions, so the DeFi protocols, uh, the the metaverse solutions that need to understand really where are the hidden security risks in the protocol itself. When you build on solid solidity, understanding the EVM internals gives you much better understanding of of what can go wrong. Uh, there is a bit of like false sense of security if you understand solidity only and if you don't go a bit deeper. Um, so we do security for others because understanding protocol so well. And again, like just being on the core team means that usually you'll be asked all of those questions. You'll be asked how to build DeFi protocols on top, you'll be asked about how to, how to audit and ensure security, but then the specialization happens and that's what happened also at Nenemite. The research itself, so we build the function of research, and you see that also at other companies like Consensus, Chainsafe, and so on, they would be building the, uh, the research around the solutions, around the solutions that they build. Uh, so what's the, how do we build it? How does it feel now inside the company? Uh, it's around 200 people in 50 countries. We are all remote. Uh, we have gone through around 200 internships and uh, still on board new. So we are not only builders, but we're also teachers. And this is, again, extremely rewarding and humbling experience of bringing new people to the ecosystem. Uh, and hopefully we'll be bringing a lot of people from, uh, from Asia and Korea. Uh, That's an opportunity to meet builders. And we learn a lot this way. Like, as you have to follow all these research materials, you have to follow all these forums, at some point you realize that all the new blood coming to the ecosystem brings some 
new understanding and allows you to move faster to understand things better. So, so we teach, but we also learn from anybody who's coming to internship. Uh, and, and you see that buzz of like over 1 million messages over a few years exchanged on our topics, channels, like uh, hundreds internal channels on Slack, uh, where we contribute to, to building up Ethereum. And coming back to the founder journey, how, how it all went from a one person to 200 people nowadays uh, by understanding that like when I was starting, it was mostly just the beginning of the crypto winter. So it's always a bit of a mixture of luck. Uh, crypto winter makes it harder to start, but it also gives you much more time to build against those who are slowing down and realize that maybe they, they, they start doubting the future and you can start beating the giants, right? So with Nethermind, it was a bit like this. They, they were already well-established players who, who built big solutions, uh, but we had two years when they were losing focus and we could just try to chase, chase, chase and build new solutions, new approach. Uh, so what helped? It was bootstrapped. It was one person at the beginning, but then there was the Ethereum Foundation grant. So if you see the grants in any of the layer one ecosystems, you can reach out for, for that path. Uh, that helps with research, that helps with development, with launching new products very often for launching the protocols, right? You can, with the idea for monetization from the day one, you can go to VC and say, this is how I build business. When you want to just learn the protocol built and you think you, deeply inside, you think that one day you'll be, you'll be building something amazing, but you need to become an expert at a protocol and you don't know exactly yet how exactly it will look, uh, then, then those grants might be helpful. Very often those foundations pick up the talent and say like, oh, you're building something interesting. I don't know what will come out of this, but here is the money for you because we believe that you'll build something cool. And the Gitcoin grants in Ethereum ecosystem helped a lot of, lot of uh, open source projects to raise funds. Uh, so these are community driven uh, funding rounds where you actually have additional funds from the well-established players and a quadratic voting that you can probably read out more about at the Gitcoin pages. Uh, later, Nethermind went through some minor angel, angel uh, fund uh, round. Then it got uh, support from the DeFi, DeFi projects in the ecosystem that realized, oh, we need to support the protocol. I uh, will support the protocol builders. Uh, and nowadays there's also protocol guild in Ethereum. If someone builds full time, the uh, builds the protocol, builds the core development, participates in that, uh, then you can register your name with the protocol guild and it's a independent body, some kind of, a, you can call it a DAO, but it's, it's more like just a funding for developers who dedicate to core because it's understood that it's generally very hard to build a business around core development, but many people just love it so much they want to build and protocol guild can support it. Um, so that's the path of Nethermind. It's a bit of exploration of uh, what Ethereum ecosystem is nowadays. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, these are all the details, and I'll be very happy to uh, talk to the community members over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm planning to stay here for a few weeks in, in Seoul, and uh, Nethermind is super excited about this region because we've always been a bit of a hidden in Europe and US layer. Thanks.